The purpose of this mini lecture is to do some sample problems that involve calculations of pH and pOH and the concentrations of the hydrogen ion and the hydroxide ion. Um, it assumes that you uh, are a little bit familiar with the subject. If you're not, please go back and take a look at the mini lecture that just deals with pH and pOH. Um, at the end of that mini lecture, uh, we had this set up here, this kind of roadmap of going through these problems. And your goal with this mini lecture and lesson is to become proficient at converting back and forth between all of these different variables. Because if you know one of them, you can calculate any of the other three. So we'll be using that as our guide. Our first example problem. And at any time, if you want to pause this lesson and try to work these out on your own before you see the solution, uh, by all means do so. So our first problem is we're given the hydrogen ion concentration of 3.1 times 10 to the minus fourth molar, and we're asked to find the pH. And so we look at our roadmap and we say that we see the relationship between the concentration of the hydrogen ion and the pH is that the pH is equal to the negative log of the hydrogen ion concentration. So we just simply need to substitute in our concentration of the hydrogen ion. And if we find the log base 10 of that number, we get negative 5 or 3.51. And in order to find the pH, we just have to take the negative of that. And taking the negative means just changing the sign. So we change the sign and we have a pH of 3.51. And for you fans of significant figures out there, and who isn't, um, when we take a look at doing logarithms, the way to do the significant figures is if your original, you determine the, the sig figs in your original number, in this case, our original number, 3.1 times 10 to the minus fourth, had two significant figures. Once you take the logarithm, you should have two decimal places in your answer. So our pH should go to two decimal places because our original concentration had two significant figures. Our next problem, uh, we are given the pOH of 5.72, and we're asked to find the concentration of the hydroxide ion. So this is a pOH uh, calculation, kind of working it backwards now. And in order to work it backwards and get rid of that logarithm term, we need to raise both uh, sides. We need to take the power, uh, raise, or 10 to the raise to the power of each side in our equation. So our, hyd our hydroxide ion concentration is going to be 10 raised to the power of the negative pOH. So we substitute in, we've got our pOH value of 5.72. We change the sign, take 10 raised to that power, and we get the concentration of the hydroxide ion is 1.9 times 10 to the minus sixth molar. Again, our pOH had two decimal places, so our final answer should have two significant figures. Our next example is a little bit more complicated because it's going to require two steps. We're given the hydrogen ion concentration, and we're asked to find the pOH. So looking at our roadmap up above, you can see there are kind of two routes we could go. We could take a first route of using the auto-ionization constant, that equilibrium expression for water, and using that to calculate the concentration of the hydroxide ion, and then use that concentration to find the pOH. Um, I don't prefer to go that way because it's just a little bit more complicated to have to worry about all the scientific notation and division. I would find it easier to first convert your hydrogen ion concentration to a pH, and then use the relationship between pH and pOH to find the pOH. It's a little bit simpler to use. It's using fairly low positive numbers and it's just addition and subtraction. So using this root, uh, the pH, of course, is the negative log of the concentration of the hydrogen ion. Uh, performing that function, you should get that the pH is equal to 9.02. Since the pH plus the pOH must add up to 14, if we rearrange that equation to solve for the pOH, it's simply the pOH is equal to 14 minus the pH. We can substitute our number in and get our pOH of 4.98. If you go the other route and first uh, find the concentration of the hydroxide ion, there's nothing wrong with it. Mathematically, you'll end up in the same place. Our final example is just 
A similar example, just working backwards, this time we're given the pH, and we're asked to find the, the hydroxide ion concentration. And again, we're going to go, I'm going to take on the route of first finding the pOH, and then working backwards to find the, P, the concentration of the hydroxide ion. So again, our pOH is just going to be 14 minus the pH, which will give us a pOH of 1.18. And then to find the hydroxide ion concentration, we have to take 10 raised to the power of the negative pOH. And when we substitute in our pOH of 1.18 and change its sign, we'll calculate that the concentration of the hydroxide ion is 0 0.066 molar or 6.6 .6 times 10 to the minus 2 molar. And the thing to watch out for in all of these problems to make sure you know and, and pay attention to which piece of information you're given and which piece of information you're asked for because um, it's easy to mistake a pH for a pOH and vice versa.